We're here at the Lascaris War Rooms, former British headquarters renowned as the strategic nerve center during World War II. Today, I'll meet Dexter Kutayar, Netrefer's head of commercial, where we'll learn about Netrefer's sales team's strategies and accomplishments. So Dexter, Netrefer is a real veteran of iGaming affiliate marketing. You've partnered with some of the real giants in the sector, but companies that weren't always giants. Can you talk a bit about some of those partnerships and some of those success stories? Sure. So Netrefer started its journey within the iGaming industry 15 years ago. When Netrefer started off, the industry was still ramping up, especially when it comes to affiliate marketing and performance marketing, because affiliate marketing was really the start of what, we, what the industry started to consider as performance marketing. You would have iGaming operators going out to the industry and recruiting affiliates, an extension of, of the operator, in order to get to the masses, in order to get to the crowds. And Netrefer came into the industry and essentially revolutionized the way in which affiliate marketing was done by giving an all-encompassing tool, uh, allowing the operators to track that affiliate journey, onboard affiliates, and expand the, their affiliation realm. Now, 15 years ago, when we came into the scene, we were onboarding what at the time were startups, startup operations. They weren't necessarily startups as iGaming operators, but they were still starting up their affiliate marketing programs. We're very happy with the fact that our first client is still to date our client and that they have grown tremendously over the years. And it's not only with our first client, so that wasn't the only success stories, we've had many success stories, um, and that's where we're really convinced when we use the term partnership. Partnerships, for us, these partnerships need to tick multiple boxes. Whenever we go into this partnership, we need to see longevity. We need to see the movie play throughout the years. And we've been very successful at doing that. The company and the way in which we do business has evolved tremendously over the years. We've gone like, like any startup, I would say. We've gone from being client-driven to being client-centric. Today, I can really say that we have embraced that client-centric mentality. But so tell me a bit about, I'm a bit confused, what's the difference between being client-driven and client-centric? So client-driven is when, you, when, when you're starting up for a business, it's when you're starting up and you're essentially going out to your partners understanding their individual needs and executing on those needs. So being client driven again, it's, it's, it's more the client that's driving, that's steering the ship than yourself as a business. You, you, you're going with the flow. So they're giving you their needs. They're like giving you their needs specifically right. and you're executing without necessarily understanding what those needs really are. Over the years, so when, when Netrefer got to a stage where we, understood, we really understood what value we were bringing to our clients and what the industry actually needed, that's when we started to shift. So over the past three, four years, we have really focused on that shift. Today, we're in a position where we're understanding those client needs and we're taking those client needs to the masses. So we're really understanding the need, really understanding what the client wants to achieve, and from there, developing and executing on that broader strategy. And that's the client-centric? That's the client-centric. I see, I that's see. That's the client-centric. So that's sort of rolling it out on a sort of a wide, an industry on, on, scale? On, yes, streamlining, right. streamlining individual needs. Because at the end of the day, this is one industry. When you start seeing needs coming in, you start to understand that the needs of one Two different scales to, the, to varying degrees, but the needs of one are the industry of the masses, you know? And, and that's when you, you start developing your, your offering, you start developing your value proposition in order to cater for those needs. And that's, when the, that's where the platform sort of has evolved, I guess, and, and come out of that. Yes. So today, it's a streamlined offering. It's still customizable though. Right. And that's the beauty of taking this client-centric approach. Because in, in doing so, 
you're ensuring that you have a sustainable business, you're developing a sustainable business, you're streamlining, but you're still open to customizations. Right. Those customizations come in differently, they come in in a more streamlined fashion. They come in in a more sustainable fashion. So let's let's dig in a bit to the, like the early part of that partnership. One of the first teams that's under your protective wing that prospective clients see when they first contact NetRefer is the sales team. Uh, now, when I met Jackie Backman, uh, NetRefer's chief performance officer, in, in a previous walk and talk, she emphasized the critical importance of the company's core values, clear, fair, trusted. So uh, from a sales perspective, that strategic aspect, how do you implement you know, that um, when it comes to negotiating with prospective clients? So when I, when I joined the company, one of the first things we did was really taking the time to understand what we wanted to deliver, what message we wanted to deliver to our clients through the sales team. Now, in, in sales, in any sales environment, one of the most critical aspects is delivering a clear message, managing your client's expectations and ensuring that you can execute, you can actually deliver on what you're committing yourself to deliver, especially with NetRefer. So with NetRefer, it's not just, it's not one sale, it's not one single interaction. It's, we look for longevity. So as I said, a client that was onboarded 15 years ago, is still our client today. Right. You would not be able to achieve such longevity if you're over-promising or if you're under-delivering. And that's where the function of our sales team, uh, in fact, for, for, for a two, three year timeline, we were calling our sales team the consultative sales team mm -hmm. because they were taking the consultative approach we, because we wanted to make sure that we were actually consulting with our clients and directing them as to what they can expect, what we can deliver upon, um, and in what way, in what fashion, we can deliver upon what we're committing ourselves to deliver. Right, so, so it sounds like there's, there's an actual initial cons consultation phase with each client where you dig into what yep. they're trying to achieve and how that sort of matches with what you're able to offer. As for sure, for sure. Again, NetRefer is quite boutique in the way we, we don't have thousands of clients, you know? Um, we have just over 100 clients. Mm -hmm. We could cater for a much larger capacity. We could cater for, for the masses. However, we, we still want to remain boutique. We still want to offer that personal touch. We still want to make sure that our account managers, that our sales team has the time to really sit down with the client, understand their needs, and then consult both with the client and with the inter internally with the business right. in order to ensure successful delivery. Right. Um, it's, it's, you know, it all starts with the sales thing. It all, the journey starts there. There are client facing proxy, essentially, when it comes to initiating the journey. And so it sounds like it's really about building that bridge between the client and their expectations and the various uh, yes. service providers within the company that are going to yes. give them what they're looking and for. And ensuring, ensuring that, that, that seamless transition. It's integrating those teams. It's integrating those processes. And the sales team is the very start of the journey. So when, when COVID-19 struck Dexter, I mean, real life meetings and public events came to a complete grinding halt. Obviously a big challenge for a sales operation. Talk a little bit about how your team overcame that hurdle to continue meeting and, and attracting new clients. Yes, so when COVID-19 hit, um, it hit, it hit the industry at large, but the impact of that went, went far beyond. Um, we were pretty successful at mitigating the impact of COVID-19 internally within the business. As a start, I, I would say we were able to take our operations from being office-based to online within a matter of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, our first focus was obviously the client-facing teams because we wanted to ensure that the impact or any potential impact was mitigated as quickly as possible. We had clients, so operating within the iGaming industry, we had clients that were very dependent, for example, on, on, on sports events. 
which all came to a grinding halt, pretty much immediately. Mm. So again, we wanted to make sure that we were reaching out, that we were sitting with the clients, understanding their, understanding their pain, what they were going through, and catering for that pain. So ensuring we could stand by them mm -hmm. in whatever way possible. You know, we were consulting with certain clients on a week to week basis. So we're, again, really understanding what they were saying, how the, the, the effect could be mitigated. Right. Um, and we were quite successful at doing so. On the other hand, you had new clients. So we had the business, the business needed to keep growing because sure. we wanted to make sure that, that, again, the impact now on Netrefer, when we started off with COVID, we didn't really know how long this would take, right. whether it was two months, whether it was six months, whether it was two years. Um, luckily, we had put sufficient uh, effort into our sales process and we were already in a place where that impact would be mitigated. So our sales pipeline was sustainable. You know, we, it, it took us through the pandemic, right. uh, which I hope is now coming to an end. So I hope it's all behind us now. Um, but again, it all takes a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of dedication, and focus on partnerships. And so would it literally have been where when you would have been meeting prospective clients, perhaps in person, in a real life meeting, suddenly you're meeting prospective clients for the first time through an online Zoom call or some equivalent, you know, yes. conferencing platform. That must have been challenging for your team. It was. It wasn't as challenging as I would expect it would have been in other industries. Um, you know, iGaming was always at the forefront. We, we, we were already quite used to doing business online. Right. I mean, out of our entire client base, only 30, 35 clients are located in Malta. Right. We interact with these clients, again, on a weekly or on a monthly basis, depending on their requirements as a business. So we were already used to the online world before COVID. During COVID, it became much more of a need, even because our teams were now operating remotely um, but I think we've we've done right. really well you've continued to onboard new clients by the we continued day. there was a slowdown right. the slowdown again it was it wasn't a slowdown so in terms of, of client requests in terms of prospects approaching Netrefer we still had continuity there we still had had you know that said we purposefully said, okay, so how do we ensure that we strike the right balance in directing our operational teams between maintaining, maintaining the focus on our existing clients and maintaining that support mm -hmm. and gradually grow, growing the business right. because that's a very delicate balance, balance that you need to stack, especially in these types of situations. Very interesting, Dexter. Thank you so much for these answers. Welcome. Stay connected for part two of three next week to learn more about how the company adds value through the account management team.